This is the world we knew. Where traveling used to be like this. So much of everything. Too much of everything. Это не то, что мы хотим. Queremos un mundo donde viajar sea divertido, pero también respetuoso. To jail, be all with us. Nous voulons un monde où le tourisme est accessible. En nuestro mundo, el turismo nos da esperanza, belleza y paz. En nuestro mundo, el turismo es estoico y ответственно. En nuestro mundo, el mundo es un mundo. Y esperamos su rey. Con nuestras ideas, nuestra determinación, nuestro corazón. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, and welcome to our uh, final webinar in preparation of the Global Youth Tourism Summit of Sorrento. Today, we are going to uh, have a very interesting topic, a topic that everyone is talking about, but a topic that uh, always needs um, actors, that uh, people that are really taking the lead, because what is really important, and this is what we're trying to prove now with the Global Youth Tourism Summit, is that uh, we need actions and we need voices that are there showing us the way being brave enough and reminding everyone that we need to speak up and we need to act. So I am incredibly honored today because I'm joined by uh, two very special individuals and uh, Amy and Ella Meek, who are also very well known as the Kids Against Plastic. So we want to know everything about them. This is definitely an important moment uh, for all of us, because uh, Amy and Ella really represent what activism is. And when activism comes from a true standpoint of very simple, but very focused needs, then things can change. And Amy and Ella definitely are changing the world. And we're very, very privileged that they want to change the world with us as well. And with all of you. Uh, I know I don't want to disclose too much, but obviously, uh, Amy and Ella will be also coming with us in Sorrento. They will be with us for the, for the full week of Sorrento. So you'll also have a chance to meet them as uh, in person when we are there. And they're also part of our chat. So they're also part of the family. We've been working with Amy and Ella on the side. They've been following us. They have a huge uh, following, which is now watching us on YouTube, I hope. So a big hello to the club of, of the Kids Against Plastic. We're also aiming to support Amy and Ella to make sure that this club becomes a global club uh, because we think uh, this is what the Global Youth Tourism Summit is all about, really, is about creating this very large community and very, very many thematics. Now, you all know that, uh, and we've spoken about it, that the tourism sector is highly susceptible to climate change and often is indicated as one of the causes of the pollution and in general of uh, the making a carbon footprint and maybe an Amy and Ella could tell us a little bit more about it together with our uh, other guest from the UNWTO, the carbon footprint of uh, that is somehow contributing in a negative way to climate change. So what we are doing at UNWTO, we're accelerating uh, the climate action in tourism. And this is very important because we are trying to achieve the sector's resilience, but also the capacity of the tourism sector to lead in paving the way. So uh, we are also joined today, as it happened in, in last webinars, by one of our uh, dear friends, who's also um, uh, a dear colleague, Virginia Fernandez Trapa. She's connected with us. She'll be speaking to us uh, immediately after Amy and Ella. Hello, Virginia. And uh, she aims at sharing with you um, all relevant info of what UNWTO is doing, what we're planning to do. Of course, we talk to the governments, the same govern governments you're supposed to talk to, but also to the private sector. So Virginia is very active and uh, she was enthusiastic in joining us and she'll be able to 
uh, not only present, but also respond to your questions a little bit later on. So thank you very much, Virginia. I hope you're gonna enjoy. But without any further ado, I wanna give the floor to Amy and Ella, because I feel that this is really, we've really hit a turning point here. And so girls, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Alessandra. Thank you. We're just gonna start sharing our screen as we have a, a mini slideshow to show everyone that might make our talk a little bit more engaging for everyone. But hello everyone. It is honestly such a, a pleasure and a privilege to be here speaking to you all today and to just be involved in the Global Youth Tourism Summit this year alongside you guys. Uh, just a massive thank you to Alessandra and her team for the opportunity to be part of this summit and to be speaking to you all here today. We can't wait to share our story with you guys and really just to connect with you all in Sorrento next month, which we are very much looking forward to. We're Amy and Alan Meek. We're 18 and 16 years old and we're from the UK. We're the co-founders of an environmental charity called Kids Against Plastic, which we've been running for over six years since we were 12 and 10 years old. Our charity aims to tackle the huge problem of plastic pollution through manageable steps and most importantly, youth action of all ages. But more on that point soon, because firstly, we'd like to introduce you all a bit more to the problem of plastic pollution. And Alessandra's already alluded to many of the problems that it causes and the impact it has. And the chances are it's probably an issue that you'll have heard of before and perhaps even seen or experienced firsthand, because despite all of our different locations and backgrounds, plastic waste is something that we've probably all come into contact with in one way or another. But to really understand the true scale of plastic pollution properly, we'd like to play a little short quiz to get us all started today. It's going to be really simple. We're going to ask you a question and give you three possible answers. All you have to do is type the letter of the answer you think it is in the chat, but don't press send right away. We're going to wait until everyone has had time to decide on their answer, and then we'll do a countdown from three, after which everyone can press enter at the same time. So let's get started. Yeah, absolutely. So on to our first question. So our first question for the quiz today is, how long do you think it takes a plastic bottle to break down when it goes into the environment? So do you think that it takes 50 years, 450 years, or a thousand years? So put A, B, or C in the chat, but don't press enter yet. Make sure you just type in the chat box. We'll wait a, a few more seconds to make sure everyone's had time to decide on their answer for this question. And then once everyone's got their answer, we'll do a countdown in a second and you can all press enter. Okay, so I think we'll, it's time for the answer for the first one. So in three, two, one, press enter in the chat. Brilliant, look at this. Okay, so we've got quite a few answers come through. This is brilliant. So we've got quite a few Bs here, a few Cs, uh, an A, another B. Okay, so quite a split answer for this one, which is not surprising, but the answer actually is... Oh, keep it in suspense. <laughs> B, 450 years. A plastic bottle does take 450 years to break down into smaller pieces. And even then, it just stays around forever as tiny plastic fragments. And these are called microplastics. Microplastics can then be eaten by fish, which think that it's food. And then when we eat the fish, those toxins in the plastic that's eaten by the fish also enter our bodies too, which is really scary, but... It's a good fact to be aware of. And we'll move on to question two now. Okay. Question two, how many seabirds have eaten plastic? Is it A, 90%, B, 78% or C, 25%? So again, just write A, B or C in the chat and don't press send straight away. And we'll just give everyone yeah, a, a few little more bit seconds. longer. So this is the percentage of all the seabirds on the planet and an estimate of how many have eaten plastic so far. So should we go through the answer? Yeah. So press enter in three, two, one, enter now. Okay, excellent. Okay, so we've got another, this is quite a split one again, actually. So I've got to make sure we don't stop reading the ones from last time, but quite a few 90%, a few Bs, a couple of Cs in there as well. Okay, amazing. So another sp split answers there, but the answer for this one actually is a, 
So the answer is 90% of seabirds have been found to have eaten plastic. So seabirds, along with other sea creatures, often mistake plastic floating in the ocean for food, especially as because it's often quite colourful and bright and appealing. And so it's also predicted that in around 30 years time, this percentage will have risen up to around 99% of seabirds having eaten plastic. So almost all seabirds on the planet. OK, so and I can see Alessandra said her dogs also eat plastic. So I really hope <laughs> your dogs are OK, Alessandra, because one thing we know for certain is that a lot of these animals actually aren't impacted well by this plastic. OK, it's good to hear they are. <laughs> Amazing. On to the last question then. So got to make this one count. So question three, how many pieces of plastic do you think enter the oceans every single day? OK, so is it 800? 8,000 or 8 million pieces. So again, typing your answer in the chat, not pressing enter yet. So this is individual items going into the oceans as litter every single day as well. Okay, so we'll press enter in three, two, one, enter. Okay. Excellent. So we've got quite a few C's for this one again. So quite a few people saying 8 million, a B in there as well, and a few, quite a few C's. Okay, so this one seems to be a lot more unanimous, which is yeah. interesting. So time for the, the answer for the last question. The answer is C, 8 million pieces of plastic go into the oceans every single day. And this can be in the form of plastic bottles, bags, or microplastics that we spoke about earlier. Yeah, so that's the end of our, our snap quiz on plastic pollution. And well done, everyone. You know, we were quite impressed by how many people knew for that one. And especially as some of those facts are quite hard to believe because they're so massive and overwhelming. But hopefully that's shown you a bit more of the scale of the plastic problem. Back in 2016, when we were first introduced to the problem of plastic pollution, we didn't know that much about it at all. But when we started looking into it, we were really shocked. We were hearing facts like the ones that we just covered in the quiz, and we were seeing photos and information like the ones on screen right now. And it really opened our eyes to how pressing of an issue plastic pollution is, and most importantly, how we all play a part in our lives to contribute to it. But the thing is, us kids, are the future generation. So we'll inherit this planet from our parents. And because plastic lasts forever and takes so long to degrade, it means that we're going to inherit all of this rubbish from our parents too. And we don't know about you, but we certainly don't want to live on a planet that's just been choked in plastic. And if we are to have any chance of stopping the plastic problem before it's too late, we need to take action now to tackle plastic pollution. Otherwise, there'll just be too much plastic on our planet to handle. And that's exactly why we started Kids Against Plastic, to do our bit to make an impact on the plastic waste crisis. We saw that plastic pollution was a big problem and one that we were passionate about tackling. So we turned that passion into action and began our own environmental campaign, which has now grown into a charity. But running a charity the age of 10 and 12 isn't easy. We've learned so much over the six years of running Kids Against Plastic from when we first started in that picture you can see on the far left to a much more recent picture on the right. But in the beginning, I think we'll admit that we were pretty naive as to how hard running an environmental charity would be. I think originally we decided that we were going to tackle one of our pet peeves of plastic, which was bottled water, because in the UK, buying bottled water when tap water's basically free and safe and more eco-friendly, just seemed crazy to us. And we wanted to change that by getting all plastic bottled water off of supermarket shelves in the UK. But it was not that simple, as you might imagine. Yeah, if only. We emailed all of the big UK supermarkets, telling them about plastic pollution and the alternatives to bottled water that they could stock, like cans or even cartons. However, their responses were either non-existent, automatic replies, forwarding our email to the relevant department, or just turning the idea down completely. And to be completely honest, as young kids, we felt pretty disheartened by this because we just told someone with the power to make a large scale change really quickly, and they didn't decide to do anything about it for the sake of money or lack of consumer demand. But this didn't stop us. And instead, this barrier really showed us 
the power that we could all have as individuals against this issue because supermarkets unfortunately weren't just going to listen to the voices of two passionate young girls but if millions of their customers were more aware of plastic and more demanding of action against it then they would be forced to switch to more eco-friendly alternatives and that's what led us to setting up our Plastic Clever initiative, which is our simpler and more achievable version of being plastic free, as cutting all plastic from your life can be pretty expensive and difficult and disheartening if you don't manage to achieve it. And so Plastic Clever is instead about reducing the use of single use items in small ways with easy alternatives and starting in particular on your top most used plastic items, top four in particular. Plastic Clever is so simple and manageable that it can be applied to all sectors, which is why we work with cafes, families, businesses, festivals, councils, schools and more to help them all become Plastic Clever. As small changes do make a huge difference if we all make them. We have a particular focus at the moment on our schools initiative with more than 1,300 schools signed up to the scheme, reducing their plastic usage and empowering their pupils. And this is something that we hope to grow more in the future. But alongside our plastic action, we've also been busy litter picking. And we first started our charity. We'd learned in our research that the staggering statistic that 100,000 sea mammals are killed by plastic in the oceans every year. So we thought, you know, that would be a good goal to aim for with our litter picking. And five years later, at Christmas Eve last year, actually, we managed to reach that goal with the help of our own litter logging tool, which we use to track the plastic that we collected and allow others to join in and log their litter picks too. We never thought that we could have come so far with our charity, especially after our slightly rocky start to campaigning, but we're so proud of how far that we've come. We've had some incredible opportunities throughout the years of doing our work, like doing a TEDx talk, speaking in the Human Rights Chamber at the UN headquarters in Geneva, visiting Parliament in 10 Downing Street to speak to politicians, receiving a BEM honour and a Pride of Britain award, and meeting some incredible people and young activists. These opportunities have all given us a platform to share our work and try and accelerate the action that's necessary to combat this huge plastic problem. But the most important part of Kids Against Plastic for us hasn't been the presentations or meeting politicians or even reaching our 100,000 goal. It's been the young people that we work with and inspiring, supporting and encouraging the next generation of environmental change makers is really at the heart of everything that we do with our charity. Uh, I mean, it's in the name Kids Against Plastic, after all. And Ella and I are just ordinary kids. And if we've managed to come this far with our work, then we believe any other young person can, person can really do the same. And that's exactly why we run our Kids Against Plastic Club, which is a group of over 200 young people from over 10 different countries that we support and facilitate with their own action against plastic pollution. We meet every Saturday morning with the club and share what everyone's doing, learn a bit more about plastic and importantly, play loads of fun environmental games. And alongside the meetings, we have an award scheme for litter picking. We have resources for the kids to use in their plastic action and challenges set by other club members to get involved with. And the kids in the club are really a range of ages from as young as three to five years old up to around 14. But they all really share the same passion and enthusiasm. And importantly, the belief that age isn't a barrier for taking action for what you believe in and really how it's far from it. Some of our club members have even stepped up to take larger roles in Kids Against Plastic, using the platform and network to lead their own action against environmental issues. They are our Kids Against Plastic team, Ali, Anaya, Raven, Thomas and Skye, and they're all turning their passion for the planet into real actionable change far beyond their years. And we are lucky enough that Sky, one of our team members, is actually able to join us here today. Now, Sky is the Kids Against Plastic Chief Campaigns Officer, and she has been doing some pretty incredible campaign work against plastic waste, to put it lightly. So we're going to hand over to Sky for just a couple of minutes to explain a bit more about her journey. Sky, just make sure you're unmuted. I think you might still be muted. 
Uh, hi everyone, my name is Sky. Um, I'm 11 years old and I'm from North Wales and I'm incredibly proud to be the Chief Pam Pam Campaigns Officer for Kids Against Plastic. I'm here today to tell you a bit about me and my campaigning. Just over a, a, over a year ago I received this. A horrible history magazine covered in plastic with plastic packaging, plastic tape, plastic blister packaging and cheap plastic toys. This is literally rubbish. We exploit our planet, extract fossil fuels, consume energy and use hundreds of litres of water to make this plastic rubbish. Seriously? I took action and started my petition, ban plastic toys on comics and magazines. And so far within the UK, it's had some huge wins. Over 65,000 supporters, Waitrose, a massive supermarket chain, agreed with me and banned them from sale forcing the main publishers to produce sustainable cover mount policies and get rid of the plastic rubbish. I want to put this in some kind of perspective. Almost half a million kids' magazines are sold every month in the UK. This one horrible histories magazine has 10 pieces of plastic on it. As a result of my campaign, around 5 million pieces of plastic every month 60 million pieces of plastic each year will no longer be produced. This is unbelievable. But this is just the UK. And now my attention turns to publishers and retailers across the world. The battle continues. I now work with loads of incredible young people with Kids Against Plastic and Surfers Against Sewage, inspiring other young people to take action, make change and have their voice heard. Who would have thought just over a year after writing an angry letter to a publisher, an 11 year old kid will be changing publishers, retailers and media companies. You can make a difference. You can have your voice heard. You can make change. Just do something. That's incredible. Thank you so much, Sky. I'm sure you'll agree with us in saying that Sky is massively inspirational, especially for her age. So. Thank you so much for joining us today, Sky, and sharing that with everyone. Um, now, unfortunately, not all of our team members can be with us today, like Sky, and sharing their story in person. But whilst you can't hear from them in person, you can hear from them via video. So here are Ali, Inaya, and Thomas, some of our other team members, here to give you a brief insight into the actions that they've been up to. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hi. My name is Ali. My name is Anaya Ijaz. I am Thomas. I'm eight years old and I live in Spain. I am 12 years old from London in the UK. I'm 10 years old and I'm an environmentalist and a naturalist. Sorry, the video it just seems to have frozen. Just... From Devon in England. The environmental issue that concerns me the most is plastic pollution because it's everywhere and it has links into climate change. The environmental issues which concern me the most has got to be the generation of waste. This happens from every single person in our planet and this will continue to grow as our living standards will continue to rise. That's why I joined Kids Against Plastic. We aim to litter pick as often as possible and spread awareness to our communities, including our schools, etc. Just like I did when I eradicated all single use water bottles from my school canteen. I am working to convert the whole of scouting to become plastic clever. The way I help is by doing litter picks and raising awareness by talking at school, by Kids Against Plastic and by Renewable English. I am currently working to produce an online resource for scouts and their leaders to complement Amy and Ella's Plastic Clever Schools scheme and to get sponsorship for the whole of East Devon. I also aim to spread awareness on my fortnightly radio shows which I host on 24 hours radio where I also spread awareness about plastic pollution, climate change and why it is extremely detrimental to our environment. Thanks for watching and remember, stay away from single use plastics. 
Hello. A big part of the Kids Against Plastic Club and team is about sharing inspiration. The Kids Against Plastic Club constantly inspire us with their passion and positivity and hopefully motivate each other with their ideas and action at the same time. This shared inspiration and community is one of the real strengths of youth action. And we're sure that you'll have seen it and felt it already being part of the summit so far and will continue to in Sorrento. Now, it's something that we certainly see, not just from with our own, within our own youth-led charity and networks, but from young people around the world who are just stepping up and making the change that they want to see. And we love being inspired by other incredible young people like you who are part of the Global Youth Tourism Summit and by the actions that they are taking, not just to protect the environment or address plastic pollution, but just to make a positive difference in their locality, even during difficult times. And that's exactly what these young people are doing, who we've been lucky enough to connect with through our charity. Hello, UNWTO and the GYTS participants. Hi. Hello. Hi. 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 I live in Myanmar. I'm from Mongolia. I live in Mongolia. I live in a small village close to Sigi in Sri Lanka. I live in Myanmar. I passionate about keeping our village clean, happy, and safe. I am passionate about Malaysia. I am passionate about beautiful countries. I am passionate about climate change. I am passionate about sharing to my country. My action is to do regular letter collection. I study English as well as I can. I then share what I learn with others so they too can get a walk later. I've decided to help my family raise some extra income. At this time, by making crochet gifts, which I sell to people abroad. My action is collect rubbish with my friends and it makes me feel much better. My action is to do regular litter collections. Every weekend I attend a spoken English class so I can work as young woman mm -hmm. and help my family yeah. to earn. The action I have decided to take is to put a poster around the village having people to understand why they can protest our previous lake. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. Now, hopefully, just to finish, what these messages from kids of all ages, from all around the world, tackling all sorts of ranges of different issues, shows you that is that we all have a role to play in addressing the problems that we see facing our planet. And we may be young people, but that doesn't mean that we can't have a vital role to play or the potential to make a huge positive impact, especially against an issue like plastic pollution. Plastic is absolutely everywhere and affecting everyone, wildlife, human health, the environment, the climate crisis and tourism. It's on our beaches, in our rivers, on our streets, causing pollution and injury. And we're guessing it's probably a problem in your village, town or city too. Most of the environmental problems facing our planet are nothing new. In fact, many of them have been around since before we were born, yet previous generations have failed to acknowledge and address them with the urgency that they require. That means that for us as young people, we have a hugely important role to play. It's clear to see the huge disastrous impacts that plastic pollution, climate change, and many other environmental crises facing our planet will have unless we step up and take action now. And that action doesn't just have to come from governments or companies. If we just wait for them, we might be waiting a long time. Instead, it can come from each and every one of us. Plastic pollution in particular is an issue that we're all contributing to. But if we're all a part of the problem, then we can be a part of the solution. And that can start today. So thank you so much for listening, everyone. We really look forward to hearing some of your questions and meeting you all in Sorrento soon as well. Thank you so much. I believe that we're all under the same uh, sort of mesmerizing feeling. I was seeing and watching the comments both on the chat and mainly on our WhatsApp group. And then I think we feel all very inspired. <clears throat> and mostly, I would say, I, I feel a little bit shy because I think you guys are really doing a fantastic job and we should all take an example from you. 
And the kids of the club, absolutely amazing. Sky, we love you. And I would like to ask you, what are all these plants behind you? I mean, what, what are they? Are you oh, doing? I'm not totally sure what all they are, but I've got a lot. <laughs> Good. It looks looks like you really want to green the world, which is really nice. And I really particularly appreciate it when, you know, we're self-introducing and saying that they're an activist. I love that because at, at the end of the day, activism is ageless. And as you are reminding us, all of you, is we can be and feel responsible at any age and the change starts from us. So at this point, I mean, I really have little to say, I can just add, I was teasing. One of the pillars of uh, GYTS from UNWTO side that is, side that is uh, Nina in my team. I was teasing her because she's also a scout. She makes a big deal about being scout. So we're gonna have to think about this like a side event and getting all the scouts in. So anyways, um, thank you so much. Now I think that we should open the floor for questions. Amy and Ella, do, are you ready to answer questions from your peers? Okay, so please, everybody that is watching, make sure that you are asking your question. So please post it in the chat if you want to, or raise your hands if you want to uh, ask your question. You are free to unmute yourself, yeah? So you got the freedom to do that. Please don't tell me you don't have any question for Amy and Ella because I really don't believe you. Ooh, I think one of the problem with activism and shyness. Ah, uh, here we go. So who do I go first? Do I go Melina or do I go Marta? Melina, do you want to start? Sure. I'm muted. Hi, um, it's really nice meeting you. Um, I had a little question about how we could possibly get our schools really involved into your program. Yes, yeah, so with the schools initiative, I mean, we've currently got a UK focus with the schools, but we have got schools that have signed up internationally already. So it's definitely something that anyone can get involved in. I know that one of the main barriers, obviously, is language. And we're currently looking at there. We've got a French translation of the resources done. A Spanish one is coming soon. And we're working, we're speaking with Alessandra about how we can um, allow more translations to be done of this and link it in with this, the, the summit as well. So it is currently open to anyone, but we are developing some other languages as part of that. But thank you for your interest. Definitely. And I would just like to add that Melina is from Melina? Algeria. Yes. So she speaks French. So oh. I guess that she nodded when you said French. I guess that maybe we can start sharing information, Melina. I think definitely. Uh, yeah. We're also, I mean, Amy and Ella were being um, modest as usual. The reality is we're really trying to do something. When we go to Sorrento, we are working together with also another hidden part of CAP, uh, whom we're not going to mention, but we know we know who he is. Uh, we're working on translation also for Italian. So the idea is to get as many schools involved as possible and to make sure that this initiative has a momentum which is very much needed. So yeah, definitely. And uh, uh, thank you for that. Now I'm gonna pass the floor to Marta. Hi, well, first of all, I think that what you're doing is amazing to see like people my age actually doing, doing something. It's really, really inspiring. But what I, my question is like, how is it by your like friends or people at your school that you run this like this um ngo like a because sometimes i think that during our ages we are like pretty susceptible to what our other people think or are like are you seen as like weirdos for doing this but i think it's really inspiring what you're doing so keep keep going <laughs> Thank you so much thank you did you want to go first yeah i was gonna say initially when we were first starting the charity years ago, there was a lot less awareness of the issues of plastic pollution and climate change. So it was probably a bit weirder back then that we were we were running a charity against this issue. But I'd say now we've learned so much over the years about this issue and the urgency of it. And there are so many young people all around the world working together now and taking action that a lot more people are way more supportive of what we're doing. 
and it's a re it's a really good thing to have seen this progression so yeah I think a big part of it I, we com I completely agree and you know yeah. being in school with the charity has always been interesting I think like Hella said the big part of it is I think a lot of people didn't understand at first yeah. whereas a lot more people do now especially with the amount of things that are on social media about climate change and plastics so that's helped a lot and I think to be honest a lot you're always going to get criticism especially from people your age group as a teenager and I think if we'd sort of listened to that a few years ago and let it get to us I think we'd really regret not being in the position that we are today and actually still being able to make some kind of change so it's definitely not easy to sort of try and block it out but it's definitely worth it in where it will take you well that's great keep keep going thank you so much thank you thank you marta and apologies for my 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 age but did you say where you're from marta oh sorry uh yes uh well i'm from spain Great, fantastic. Yes, so just in case you got, you, you heard Amy and Ella, they have the translation in Spanish, also for the schools. So just in case you would have the same interest of Melina, definitely, we can definitely could contribute. Yeah, I would, I would like to, if I love Lovely. Where in Spain are you based? Anything. Where in space are you based, uh, Marta? I'm from Madrid. Lovely. Great. <laughs> Thank you very much. I am missing Abdallah. Where is he? Is he not here with us today? Uh, sadly, he couldn't join today because he's at an exam. And the moment he finishes, he said he was going to join us. Right. So that's what I thought. I mean, he's not here. You have to know. Uh, I mean, Amy Ella Abdallah is like a, a, like another element of you and the He's everywhere, and he's like so passionate about it. So we are really, really looking forward for uh, his participation. I'm sure that he's going to listen to this. And he's going to be willing to ask more questions, but then he'll see you in Sorrento. So that's for sure. Um, we have Rua Asad that wants to ask a question. Rua? Yeah, hello. Hi, Rua. Can you tell us where you're from? I'm from Israel. Welcome. Shalom, Rua. How Thank are you? Thank you. I'm fine. But um, I'm just going to ask, how did you start your organization? Like... Did it have some sort of foundation? What type of help did you receive? Because where I live, we don't have this kind of awareness towards plastic pollution and climate change, especially since they, I, they actually deny it. So how did you like start? And how did it, you know, spread to really wonderful people who actually don't deny it? Just gonna, you know, some tips or advice? Yeah, absolutely. It's a it's a great question. And I think, to be honest, we were quite lucky that we, for a start, have a very supportive family who've helped us a lot with actually encouraging what we've been doing and not trying to shut it down or say, you know, just give up. It's not worth it. So we've been massively, you know, helped by having that supportive supportive guidance I think one of the main ways that we became aware of plastic and one of the things that was a real foundation for our charity was actually the UN Sustainable Development Goals, which is what we were looking at when we discovered plastic. And I think what's great about the UN Goals is they show how connected up a lot of these issues are, which, um, you know, can be one of the main problems with environmental issues, especially as they're kind of treated as these separate problems when actually the UN Goals just show how everything's connected up. So that helped us a lot with becoming more aware and having a deeper awareness of, of these issues. Yeah, no, I was just going to say that our charity has always started from just our mini homeschool project we ran as just a small family and we didn't really know any any way of how to make it grow and be where it is today. It was all a bit of trial and error and making mistakes and learning from them. Like we were talking about earlier with how we started with supermarkets, went to litter picking and then went to consumer demand. It's all about kind of testing the water and see, seeing what works best to bring about change. And uh, we use social media a lot as well to help grow and spread awareness. And from there, uh, you get opportunities and mm. then get more chance to spread awareness of what you're doing. So yeah. we've never been experts. We've never known exactly a, a, a sure plan of what to do, but yeah, it's been a lot of uh, trial and error, but learning from mistakes, not letting them get you down. Yeah, and I would say in terms of the denialism, I think it's a very, 
it's a very tricky issue to get around. It's something we still haven't managed to crack. I think we're quite lucky that in our country, it's been recognised by the government as a big problem. And so people are generally more aware or like agreeing of the fact that climate change and plastic are problems, which is massively helpful, but obviously not everyone. And I think it obviously depends on your situation. And there's, there's, I think staying positive, but also using facts as, as the basis is a really big thing is showing the clear kind of foundation that are to these issues that these are real problems that are being recognized is one thing but I would say that one of the main things that's been great about our charity is not every young person but a growing number of young people are more likely to recognize that climate change is a problem and and environmental issues are a problem and I think engaging young people especially younger kids as well not just teenagers but actually younger kids and giving them that education so that they grow up more understanding and aware is a really great place to start because by the time you're a teenager or an adult breaking habits is so much harder so I don't know I hope that's been helpful in some way I don't know if Sky had anything to add I don't want to put her on the spot but I know Sky has some great advice on things like this um I think mine was just keep going I didn't have much negative feedback, but I just ignored any of it. And some of them I even laughed at because it was kind of like, <laughs> how can you say this? So it's kind of just like, keep hold of the positive feedback and just ignore the ne- negative ones. I mean, that was really lovely. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you for your question as well. And good luck. <laughs> yeah, of course. Thank you. Thank you. Um, if nobody else has a question, then I have nothing else to do than to really thank Amy and Ella for being with us. Uh, I am not even stressing or insisting too much about it because you're going to be with us in Sorrento. But I also would like to uh, cross it a little bit before passing the floor to uh, my friend and colleague, Virginia Fernandez Trapa, who's responsible for the implementation of the environmental components of UNWTO's program of work on sustainable development, we gotta work on this. Yeah, Virginia, for me, you are everything climate change, sustainability. That's how I know you. I wanted to ask you, uh, Virginia, would you, do you have any, any, any yourself, any questions or any Ella? Well, first of all, bravo. I think it was a fantastic presentation. I'm, I'm thrilled to learn about your initiative. I think it's really great and I was, basically ticking boxes of thoughts that I had and that I wanted to share with you as as you were speaking. Um, I really don't have any questions, just additional words of encouragement. And uh, basically what I would ask for is maybe your feedback when you hear my presentation about the Global Tourism Plastics Initiative and how we can maybe bring it closer to you guys and make the connection between what you're trying to do and what we are trying to do so that tourism leaders from today and from tomorrow are thinking alike. Thank you. Thank you, Virginia. Uh, Amy and Ella, shall we uh, tell Virginia that we're going to be, uh, we're gonna give you a sneak peek, Virginia. We have something in mind for Sorrento. So you might need to consider traveling with us because uh, definitely we, we see there is a fantastic fit between our uh, Global Tourism Plastics Initiative and the initiatives of Amy and Ella are absolutely complementary. And as you very much highlighted, I think we need that type of drive and inspiration because at the end, whatever we're doing, we're doing for the Amy and Ella's of the world and for all our GYTSers and for every child. So I think it's incredibly important that we talk directly to our customers, I would say, yeah, to our future customers. So totally agree. Then, I mean, sorry, Alessandra, but I think yes. Amy and Ella said that uh, they were inheriting the earth, the, the earth from us. And I would object, basically it is us who, is, who are borrowing it from you. So I could be definitely <laughs> need I could to be speak be Great, so a big bravo to Amy and Ella. Thank you very much for being with us. It has been fantastic. Uh, would you like to say hello to your club watching? Hello. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, and thank, thank you also to the club members as well, and Sky as well for being here and sharing her amazing insights. I mean, the fact she's 11 and comes on in a, a webinar like this and speaks so eloquently, I yeah. think is incredible. So yeah, thank you to their contributions as well. Well, yes, absolutely. Thank you very much. Sky, whenever you want to give lessons on how to speak on webinars, we can hire you on a separate basis, yeah? yeah. <laughs> right? 
Okay, thank you very much. And we'll be in touch and we'll see you soon in Sorrento. And as Virginia said, we encourage you, if you have any time, of course, to stay over and to continue listening to us while I pass the floor to her for her presentation. Virginia, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Emiela. Ciao. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm going to try to uh, find the slides to share. Hold on a second. Oh, what's going on? I can share it if you want. Maybe. Thank God, Nina, I have you as backup. <laughs> For some reason, I'm not able to find it when I click share screen. I have too many windows, maybe. No problem, Virginia. We'll do it on your behalf as long as you uh, guide Nina for the presentation. No problem. One sec. I'm going to take advantage of this uh, uh, small moment just to remind everyone that there is no uh, GYTS webinar without the challenge. So we will be um, sharing with you the challenge that Amy and Ella have. And uh, uh, hopefully Amy and Ella will stay with us and we will be able to uh, um, either give them the word and if they cannot stay, we'll be delivering their challenge for all of you, okay? So uh, please make sure, once again, I'm gonna tell you that once Virginia finishes, you also have your questions ready, yeah? The, so we're all here for you. Thank you very much. Virginia, you ready, set, go? Yeah, I am finally, thank you. Sorry for that hiccup. I was keeping you all in suspense, but uh, <laughs> finally we solved it. So thanks for the invitation. I would like to basically share with you what we are doing at UNWTO to accelerate climate action in, in tourism, mainly through two different initiatives. Uh, but before I start, I just wanted to take a moment to think about the words climate action. What does it mean? Obviously, it means how we address the climate change uh, problem. But uh, I would be happy if after this chat today, you have one takeaway regarding climate action. Climate action is having two main elements. The first element is mitigation. So how do we reduce our emissions, greenhouse gas emissions? And of course we need to measure them to reduce them. And the second element is uh, adaptation, meaning how do we restore our balance with nature? That is climate action, both mitigation and adaptation. And as you can see on this slide, we have different icons from different SDGs. The work of the One Planet Sustainable Tourism Program which is led by uh, UNWTO. It's basically a network addressing environmental issues is focusing on these different SDGs. Once again, as very well outlined by Amy and Ella, everything is interconnected, but the icons that you see now on this slide are mainly portraying those that are more environmental SDGs, we could say. So that's the framing. And uh, I would then now present the Global Tourism Plastics Initiative to connect with the first uh, presentation from Amy Anella and then the Glasgow Declaration on, on Climate Action in, in Tourism. Uh, we have a video to introduce the GTPI. So Nina, please, if you can help me with that one. Thank you.
Thank you, Nina, for helping out with, with the video. It gives you a bit of an, an intro. And I won't repeat the, the scary facts that were already introduced, but maybe take a second to connect them with tourism sector and, and why the tourism sector is very affected by plastic pollution, but at the same time is also part of, of the problem. Uh, we know that most of tourism takes place in, in coastal areas where plastics actually have the possibility to go directly into the sea if they become waste. And scientists have measured what's the impact of uh, tourism in coastal areas. And they could see that, for example, when it's tourism peak season, the, the amount of plastic waste could increase up to 40 percent meaning the sector, tourism sector needs to take responsibility for the plastics that, that we use. Um, if we don't, not only in tourism, the scenario is pretty, uh, pretty horrible. They say that by 2050, there will be more plastics in the ocean than fish. Uh, actually, some people think that we are already eating more or less half a credit card worth of plastic per week those of us who eat uh, fish, for example. And if we continue at this pace of plastic production, which, as you know, plastics are made of fossil fuels, by 2050, 20% of the oil consumption in our world will be used to create plastic products, which is, if you allow me, ridiculous, because plastics are a wonderful material that can have many lives, that has been one of the best discoveries of the of humanity in the sense that it advanced medicine, it created great progress, but we are not making full use of it, meaning we, can, we are not using the potential that it has being so long lasting and we instead keep producing more instead of reusing. So um, what are we trying to do with the Global Tourism Plastics Initiative is basically what you described as plastics clever. I love that uh, wording, but for companies and for destinations in the tourism sector. So what we are saying is, what we're saying to them is you need to transition to a circular economy of plastics. What do we mean with this? We mean that obviously we need to eliminate as much as possible single use plastics or what we call problematic and unnecessary plastic items and packaging. But we also need to think about integrating reuse models because you would agree with me that for a sector like tourism, operating without plastics, like completely free of plastics, is also not reasonable. We just need to make sure that the way we use plastics is sustainable. For example, you would not, you would not be uh, reasonable to put glass uh, in a swimming pool in a hotel, but people would still like to have drinks. You could shift to paper cups, but paper cups can only have one life. So in the end, the environmental impact of these cups would be even worse than if you switch to reusable plastics. So that's the type of thinking we are trying to uh, help business uh, and policymakers integrate. And of course, we cannot do this alone. That's why we encourage them to work with uh, the value chain. By value chain, we mean the suppliers of plastic products and we mean the waste managers. So everyone involved in the system, in the tourism ecosystem, has to have an awareness to change and transition towards uh, a circular economy of plastics. You probably have heard many pledges from businesses, people committing to changing this, changing that. And uh, we wanted to make a difference. Uh, let's say we didn't want the Global Trees and Plastics Initiative to be just a pledge. This is why we decided that we would also ask the signatories to report on their progress, implementing the commitments on an annual basis. And that's why, um, let's say we, we are trying to measure um, the changes little by little. We already had one pilot reporting last year with some big hotel chains, and this year we will expand to check once again what the signatories are doing so that somehow they are being kept accountable and their commitments are for real. Here you can see some of the signatories. You may recognize some, some of the brands. Uh, for the moment, it's 115 uh, signatories from different corners of the tourism sector. But obviously, this is just a drop in the bucket when you think about the tourism sector at large. So. We need everyone on board and we're definitely working on it. That's why it's very inspiring to see that we are aligned uh, in this front. Um, some action tips. Um, 
from my side uh, as to what what you can do because uh, I mean Ella and Amy and Ella already pointed at many uh, actionables, but um, I thought it could be useful to challenge you to be more aware of the plastics that you have around. You know, plastics have codings, the codings you have on the slide there, the little numbers that tell you what type of polymer is this plastic uh, composed of. And you can see that some of them are more recyclable than others. But to really make sense, when you take action against plastic pollution, you have to have an awareness of your waste management infrastructure, meaning you need to take some time to check what your municipality is able to recycle and what not, so that you can make responsible changes and choices. Um, for instance, we know that PET plastic bottles are widely recycled, but the percentage of recycling varies depending on the location. So I encourage you to check. Now you have the codes and you can dig uh, some information of how these, these things are working where you live. Then, of course, we encourage you to engage with uh, separation and recycling. And also, please do avoid replacing single-use plastics with other single-use solutions. Remember the example of the swimming pool. If we change to plastic cups, there will be no accidents with glass, but it turns out that the plastic cup may be uh, also having environmental impacts, like, for example, cutting of trees to produce the paper or methane emissions when it's decomposing, if it's a uh, compostable, et cetera, et cetera. The same happens um, with reusables. We encourage you to use reusables, but reusables to make sense, environmentally speaking, have to truly be reused. For instance, an aluminum bottle to drink water, if you just use it once, it's gonna have much worse environmental impact than if you use it repeatedly. The reusables are meant to be reused, and if they're not going to be reused, they could even be worse than single-use plastic. So um, just take all these facts into account, and uh, I'm sure you'll be great advocates. And when you travel, bring those tips with you and see how you can apply them on travel. And of course, try to pick travel that is uh, taking these facts in, into account. Uh, I now shift to the Glasgow Declaration, maybe for the cut between topics, I could ask Nina as well to play the video, Nina, please. Thanks. Thanks again, Nina, for, for the support. So the Glasgow Declaration uh, on Climate Action in Tourism, you saw the video, an introduction of why we are doing it. And uh, maybe before I start how it connects to plastics and why we are mixing both initiatives in the same presentation under climate action is because we find uh, the fight against plastic pollution and circular economy, integrating the circular economy to, to transition to uh, a world with less uh, plastics are strategies to address climate change and to, to take climate action. This is why we connected, connected both um, presentations. Climate, what can I say? I mean, you know, is the main challenge ahead of us all, 
as humanity. We have limited time for um, the changes not to be reversible. There are scientists all over the world that are studying how, let's say, the biological indicators of our Earth, the health of our Earth is evolving and the prospects are not so optimistic. Basically, we have a decade to really speed up so we can contain global warming to uh, two degrees uh, Celsius or if possible, 1.5 degrees Celsius, which is what governments have committed to through the Paris Agreement. In any case, as usual, we think or we see that tourism is part of the problem because there are emissions coming from tourism, but at the same time, it can be part of the solution and there are a lot of things that the tourism sector can do to reduce its emissions and to support the protection and restoration of nature. So with the Glasgow Declaration, what we try to do is basically to make sure that everyone is accelerating. We really have no time to lose on, on this one. On the screen, you can see um, a graph that gives you a, an idea of how the carbon footprint the different the emissions from the different parts of the tourism sector are split. You can see that aviation is a large part of the emissions, but there's also road transport, which is uh, representing quite a number of emissions, other transport. Basically, uh, the whole transport footprint is uh, approximately 70% or 75% of the whole footprint and the rest are things that we consume while we are traveling, but we also consume on a daily basis. So once again, as for the changes um, proposed in the previous part, what you can do when you travel, you probably can do when on a daily basis. And that's how we could accelerate further. So um, again, what we are doing is asking tourism stakeholders to take, take it seriously. And for that, we ask them to sign up to the declaration. They commit to reducing their emissions, uh, they commit to trying to achieve net zero uh, by 2050 at the latest, and they commit to deliver climate plans. Maybe this looks a bit too, uh, let's say, technical, but we realized that everyone was taking action, but there was no uh, coordination or consistency between the different actions. And to be able to raise our voice as a sector and explain to governments also how the tourism sector is contributing to the fight against climate change, we needed to have certain framework that we all speak the same language so that we can make sense uh, of the good things that the sector is pushing forward, not only of the bad things like aviation is responsible for so many emissions. Again, we ask the signatories to report on an annual basis because we want them to be accountable, we want them to be committing for real, not just uh, blah, blah, blah. And we propose uh, five main elements that they need to take action on, which is measure their emissions, decarbonize, so try to, try to transition to low carbon operations, regenerate, so how they can create a positive impact in nature, protect nature, restore nature, collaborate, because this is too big of a challenge for anyone to address on his or her own, and then finance. Obviously, the companies need to have not only money, not finance only in money terms, but they need to have staff, so finance in terms of support, skills, that people can push these things uh, forward. So far, since uh, last November, when we launched the initiative at the COP26, COP is the International Climate Summit, you may have heard about, Greta was uh, coming to, to COP. Uh, we launched then in November, and since then it's grown so much, we have more than 500 signatories uh, today, 538 to be precise. We're really proud that we're even seeing some big names uh, joining, like for instance, Expedia, or Booking.com, Skyscanner, even uh, you know magazines like Condé Nast, where you know we really think maybe they can help us work at scale. It's it's great to work with individual hoteliers. Don't get me wrong; the sector is made of small enterprises, and they are the key uh, of our sector. But seeing those big players commit, we're really hopeful that maybe we are going to be uh, having the chance to work at scale and change things rapidly. And then to end, this is my last slide, some action tips again uh, from my side. So things that you can do, obviously, when you travel and when you are on, on a normal day, you have to say, think about driving less, walk and cycle more. And when you fly, fly wisely. 
try to eat uh, more plants and, and local foods, slow down your consumption, whether it is of uh, energy, try to find renewable energies available maybe for your household, uh, ask your parents if they can look into this, uh, slow down consumption of fashion, um, reduce, reuse, recycle, and protect and restore nature. And then to close, the image we have on this slide is basically the most scary images of all in the presentation, meaning from all the facts we have uh, been referring to, this is the carbon budget. What does this mean? So the earth is capable of, um, let's say, resisting an amount of carbon before entering into a phase where there's no return. There, there's irreversible consequences. So scientists have mentioned that carbon, how much carbon can the earth accumulate without collapsing, so to speak? And they've told us that we are very close to reaching the limits. Basically, there's only 8% of the carbon budget left. That is why by approximately 2030, 2034, if we don't speed up, um, we will start seeing those irreversible changes. So please speak to everybody. We need everyone on board. That's what we're trying to do from UNWTO, uh, push the implementation of the Paris Agreement uh, through tourism. And we can still do it but we, can, we have to do it together. So thank you. Looking forward to the discussion. Thank you very much, Virginia. This has been uh, fantastic. You know, I think uh, you allowed us to share with everyone. I think, um, are you sharing the presentation or is Nina doing so? There we go. I think uh, through these presentations, you really managed to uh, picture the way that, for example, you make us feel every time you give us this introduction on our activities, and you also remind us working in UNWTO how important it is, what we're doing, and what is really the, not only the impact of tourism, but what, how many things we can do with and through tourism also to raise awareness and to make sure that this is really embraced at a larger level, and we're really proud that this is ongoing. Now, Virginia, um, I think we, we both want to hear what, uh, what everyone wants to ask you. So I really encourage all the participants to grasp this important occasion and uh, ask Virginia all the questions you wanna ask. I know it lo looks difficult what she does, okay? It looks complicated, but it's not. At the end of the day, it stems from the same needs that Amy and Ella were you know, very, very clearly mentioned to all of us. So do we have any questions? And if Amy and Ella are still here, maybe you know, it would be nice as Virginia, you were mentioning you wanted to hear what they think about it. If they're still here, it would be nice to hear what they have to say. You know, Alessandra, so, maybe before, while they are thinking about the questions, um, one thing that I didn't mention and that might be of interest is that uh, very recently, like uh, I think it was last March, uh, the governments of uh, the world, so the United Nations Environment Assembly agreed that they will do a treaty on plastics, meaning there is going to be a treaty, a global treaty to address plastic pollution, same as we have the Paris Agreement to address climate change. So things are changing, it's just that they need to change faster. So. Um, that's yeah, and I, I am going to say something very uncomfortable here, and uh, the, th the fact that uh, we've been uh, using a lot of devices lately uh, for health reasons, and that includes masks, but also I'm thinking about all the containers or, or the, you know, the plastic uh, uh, things where obviously all the tests were sterilized and stuff. I just see it every time I see a test being open, I see the amount of, I, I, I started taking a look at it, and I don't know. Virginia, somehow I feel that now we've sort of overloaded, like we were at a point and now we've added stuff. And the masks as well, I don't really know, I'm not an expert, I don't really know what they're made of, but I, I mean, this is now documentaries are stock, uh, starting to talk about it because they are thrown. And once they're thrown, they are hardly reusable. So we really, I think the importance of this treaty is that it's not just awareness, it's action that is needed. And I would just like to point out one thing because this is a question I always ask you, you know, because our member states or our interlocutors always ask us, what does it mean when I sign, when I become a signatory? And when it comes to us, definitely it means you need to commit. 
right, Virginia? It's not just about you want to make yourself beautiful and you sign a, a something. You really need to commit. And uh, in that sense, uh, I think that you guys have a great job ahead of you to check that actually these commitments are met. Isn't that the case? Yeah, well, it's, it's not exactly easy, but that's exactly what, what um, motivates us, that we really want to, let's say, focus on, on quality of the commitments rather than on quantity. We like to have many, but we prefer to have less and have them for real. And I think that's, um, yeah, that's what's different between our initiatives and other pledges out there, which are also fine. Yeah, I'm not criticizing, but that's the approach that we have taken at UNWTO. Yeah. To be a bit more. Yeah. yeah, definitely, definitely. Amy and Eli, I saw you for a second. Did you want to say anything to Virginia? I mean, it was just. I mean, thank you for the presentation. It was just fascinating yeah, was, to hear more about the plan and very encouraging as well, I think, to especially as sort of a grassroots campaign to actually hear. I mean, obviously, there was the, you know, the Treaty on Plastics, which was announced recently, which is encouraging. But to hear this plan is, you know, just very encouraging to hear and very yeah. positive. And I think there's so much, you know, you're talking about connection. I think there's just so, so much general. connection and an overlap with know what we're doing but just generally with different campaigns on plastic and actually the education side of what you were talking about around the circular economy mm -hmm. and disposing of waste correctly so yeah thank you I did have one question actually if you had time it just purely out of personal interest is when you were talking about setting up the circular economy disposal of waste in for example the tourism sector and hospitality I just wondered how much of a barrier the sort of existing waste management facilities in countries posed to that plan? Because I know, for example, in the UK, you know, we've, we've not got a great recycling system and it's one of the things that's really discouraging yeah. the circular use of materials. And I, so I was just fascinated to hear really whether that was posing much of a problem or whether it was something that you see the commercial sector actually helping to improve through the, the plan that, that you're encouraging them to take part in. I hope that makes sense. Oh yeah, it makes perfect sense. Uh, it's actually a very, very good question. Definitely it's a barrier. You, you would be, I mean, I was even surprised myself to, to find out the, the levels of um, recycling, how low they are even in Europe, which as you said, is quite advanced in all these uh, topics. Um, so it's definitely a barrier. What we are trying to ask, for example, the tourism stakeholders is that when there's no infrastructure, they start uh, talking with the supplier to ask him if the products can, can come with some recycled content, with some plastic, what is called post-consumer recycled plastic, so that, okay, I'm still buying plastic, but let me at least create a demand for recycled products so that maybe one day soon, hopefully, there will be recyclable recycling facilities. They see a commercial interest in recycling because somebody's demanding, so maybe then it starts changing. That, that Those are the logics that we are trying to push. There's also a debate on um, ocean-based plastics. You know, many campaigns now collect plastics from the ocean and then they create products from this uh, ocean plastics. And our opinion is that those plastics should be then integrated in the value chain and once again, form part of products that for example, tourism companies could use but you have all kinds of opinions. Other people think that if we focus on ocean-based plastics, then we're not gonna develop the infrastructure for recycling plastics that are coming from uh, like consumer use. And then there are detractors of ocean-based plastics. So there's still a lot of debate going on in that arena, but uh, we basically think that there's no time left, so any solution is, is good, whether it's ocean plastic, whether it's post-consumer recycled plastic, as long as the infrastructure is uh, speeding up. Again, if there's no infrastructure, what's the priority? You said it yourselves, eliminate as much as possible single-use plastics, because we don't know what's going to happen to them. So we can hope for circularity, but let's hope for circularity with as little amount of plastic in our hands as possible. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much. That's just fascinating to hear. So thank you again. Thank you, Emiendala. And thank you, Virginia. I don't see any other hands risen, but I guess that uh, we're planting some important seeds here. And uh, definitely all, we'll make sure that we'll address you any other questions that could come up from our GYTSers later on. Thank you so much, Virginia, for being with us.
And we're really looking forward to uh, being in touch with you again. My pleasure, really. And if any questions you come too. up later, just... Uh, Absolutely, definitely. Yes. No be doubt, no pleasure. doubt. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Pleasure to meet you. Bye. Bye. Amy and Ella, you want to stay with me because uh, we have, I mentioned before, we have a challenge, right? And this is your challenge. So before I get give the floor to Maza, Masha and Azero that I really, uh, I'm going to ask Nina if she can make them visible in the meantime. They're going to just take over from that. I would like the, to leave you the floor. Oh, we just lost you briefly there, Alessandra. I think our internet went, but I, I think you were saying to share our challenge for everyone, if, if I'm not mistaken. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. So, um, we're very keen, you know, as you probably heard in our presentation, we're a very action based charity and we're always about how other young people can get involved. So I guess one of the things that we were hoping everyone could get involved in ahead of Sorrento and what we're going to be taking part in there is actually using the litter logging app that we mentioned to get involved in logging some of your own collections. I will just try and share a slide actually to help make this clearer if my mouse will let me. Too many too many screens here we go okay so do you want to explain a bit more Ella yeah sure so it's just three simple steps as you can see it's to scan log and submit a litter pick that you do before Sorrento and it's really simple and easy to use you just have to open the app from scanning the QR code that's on screen now and it's also on our website and then that will take you to a really easy to use interface where you can log all of the pieces of litter that you will collect. And then you just need to attach a photo and then you can submit your litter pick. Yeah, and we're not saying that the litter picks have to be super long. You, know, yeah. you don't have to go out and spend a whole weekend picking up plastic. You know, we're not gonna ask anyone to do that. They don't even have to be a dedicated cleaner. It could just be on the walk to school or, or college, just picking up any plastic you see. Um, but the aim of the, the litter logging in particular is to more create sort of a, a, a picture of plastic waste around the world in each of your different communities and countries so that when we're in Sorrento in just over a month's time we can actually start to look at the types of litter that's been found where it's been found and then look at that all important step of how can we then take action to reduce this in all of our different countries and communities so that's our challenge I think we can share more links and details with Alessandra and Masha about how you can get involved in that. But um, hopefully it should be quite a simple and quick activity to get involved in that will actually have quite a big impact for when we are in Sorrento. Yeah, hopefully fun too. <laughs> yeah, hopefully fun too, we hope. <laughs> so I have one question, Emiadala. First of all, can I participate as well? Of course, <laughs> of course. everyone, everyone. <laughs> Good, and the second one, can you tell us a bit more, what are we gonna do in Sorrento? So we were hoping that, I mean, I don't want to give too much away what Alessandro is going to be talking about, but we are going to be in Sorrento and we're going to be uh, doing a workshop while we're in Sorrento. And we'd like to use some of the information that's been collected from the litter logging app to actually look at the spread of this litter and in particular look at the types of litter that's been found. Maybe even do a bit more collecting while we're in Sorrento and look at what's been found there as well and continue it. But basically just try and get a bit of a picture so that when we do come together, we can focus more on the action side of it and the solutions that we can find to yeah. reducing this plastic in the first place. So mm -hmm. that's sort of the aim of it. That's fantastic. Thank you very, very much. Now, everyone, is the challenge clear? If it's not clear, please let us know now or speak no more. Just joking. <laughs> Everything is clear? Yeah? Great. So I think we're ready to go. Uh, Amy, Ella, of course, I am asking you if you have time to stay with us until the end. But now I am going to pass the floor over to Masha and Azair, another like two great elements of our DUADES team. So the floor is yours, guys. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for this, these amazing presentations. I think we're all encouraged and motivated. Um, first of all, I, we would like to uh, once again ask you to fill out our survey about the webinar, which will show up now on your screens. So if we could start with that. Yes, as you will see, these are uh, fairly simple questions, but your response will uh, help us to evaluate and also to uh, prepare for the, the summit itself. 
Um, soon you will have, you should have it in your screens. Uh, you will have a chance to grade overall uh, flow of the, yeah, you should have it right now. Uh, the overall um, uh, webinar itself and then the um, certain parts of it. And uh, we kindly request all of you to participate and to share with us your opinion right now. Please let us know if you're having any issues. How much time do we have to fill it up, Azer? Um, well, I would say a minute, maybe even less, because it's very easy. It's just three questions and overall uh, evaluation. In regards so to basically, if how many of us are here, I think seven or eight of us are here. I'm going to ask now Nadim, Nina, me, you, uh, Masha, uh, Teresa, and Jacobo. Is that correct? So are we looking at approximately 18 answers? I, I still see nine, 10, 12. Yeah, come on, come on. <laughs> I love it because, you know, I think Amy and Alak can also do a session on, uh, how can I say, on sort of, you know, how, how much you want to talk about stuff, you know, because it's important, I think, yeah? Yes. And we're done with the evaluation. Let's not forget our group picture. Very important. Thank you, Masha. What will we do without you? Thank God I'm looking okay today. So <laughs> we're still stuck at 15. Uh, guys, whomever of you is watching videos while watching this uh, webinar, please can you make sure you're completing your poll. We really want to know, this is really for you. So your feedback is very important, yeah? Yes, indeed, it will, it will help us to understand what did you guys enjoy, how much did you enjoy okay. it, and uh, how we can follow up on that, how we can okay, further okay. develop it. So I have a challenge for you. I want to reach the three minutes. I want to have the 22 out of 22. Do you think that's too much to ask, Azer? I mean, what are you guys yeah, going to do? In sort of, you're going to have no ways to go out of the room. We're not going to let you out. So, you know, just you have to train yourself to be focused. Hello. I'm sure that uh, I'm sure we'll get there. Uh, how many responses do we have until now? We have 15 out of 22. We're stuck. Uh, no, In no. We're only missing one then. We're missing only one more. Are you sure? Uh, no, actually, we're not missing any. I recounted now and I think we're good. We're set. Yeah. Oh, good. Well, good. I've been complaining for nothing. You should let me yeah. know that. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm going to. Stop the survey and share results. Nice. Everybody seeing their results? Good. Yes, we see. Thank you very much, everyone, for completing this uh, poll, this survey. It's, uh, as we said, very, very helpful for us. Thank you very much. Now, important group picture. Please, everybody, turn on your cameras. And uh, before we do the group picture, I just want to remind you again, please follow us on our social media platforms, engage, share, like, and all of this. We would really much appreciate it. Is this smile good enough, Masha? Yeah. I, love it. I love it. It's perfect. Parev, Parev, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, good to see you. Guys, I was just in Armenia now. You know, we were, doing a, we were doing our inspection visit for the Regional Commission for Europe, and I had the best of times, really. Areg lives in a great country. She was in Armenia, and she met Areg, as you saw from her Instagram page, correct? You saw it, yes? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, I'm missing some cameras. We have one, two, three, four, five, six people that we're still missing for the group picture. Okay. Much better, much better. Kevin? Sultanat? I think we can go ahead because they might have some connection matters, so. Do 
one one and then if they join we'll do another one yes, please. everybody smile and think sustainable tourism i stand for sustainable tourism right perfect everybody amazing thank you so much. thank you thank you much So what is happening here, Masha, now? What is, what is the program? Are we asking for any more questions from the audience or are we calling it a wrap? Because we got the challenge, we got our beautiful speakers. What are we going to do now? Since we, um, this is the last webinar, uh, let's ask for one more round of questions. And please use the raise the hand function on Zoom if you have any questions left. And I'm going to anticipate one thing before, there we go. Melina is the first one to ask a question. I would like to take advantage of this opportunity to alert you that we're gonna be reaching out uh, bilaterally to all of you uh, because we need to make sure that your uh, focal points, which are the people in the ministry that are allowing you to come to Sorrento are actually registering you correctly, putting all the information that are needed or your accompanying adults, if any. And we need to really get all this sort of admin stuff sorted out because we need to make sure things really work out and you're able to join us in Sorrento in the best way possible. So feel free to ask also these type of questions now, but also be uh, aware that we would like also to have like a more of a bilateral thing and uh, if you need any more organizational information, we'll convene another webinar. This is really very much the content that we're preparing for GYTS. So please. And also, if I could mention that if um, any of you are not in our WhatsApp GYTS chat, please make sure to send in your um, WhatsApp numbers so we can add you because we're all, we have, we have created a little community on WhatsApp with everybody just communicating with each other. So please make sure to send in your uh, numbers just in case uh, you're not part of the group yet. Okay, Melina. Yeah, so my question Melina, is about yeah. Um, You know, my colleague, Abdel Basak, he's in, he's in room here right now, but uh, he might need an invitation letter in order, oh, sorry, to get the visa. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to know if you need to reach out on the GYTS email or somewhere else. Um, if I may, Alessandra. Yeah, um, regarding- Yes, just, please, Jose. Just Alessandra has mentioned, um, in order to proceed with this administrative matters, we need uh, all the confirmed delegates to be registered. Uh, in this regard, we would encourage you um, to also get in touch with the, uh, let's say the entities that have uh, selected you to participate, uh, to invite them to realize your registration. And in the registration process, there is a possibility to request um, an invitation, a formal invitation letter for the visa procedures. So you or uh, Abdul Was said you can, they, you can mention it in the registration form and then we will follow up on this matter. Thank you so much. And uh, it's not really a question, but just a big thank you to everyone. It was really nice seeing you. Kind of sad that it's like, it's like the last webinar in Sorrento, but really glad we got to catch up again. So thank you so much. Thank you for such kind words. We are happy to have you all. Melina, is that a cat? Yes, that's Joy. Yeah. A very yeah. nice cat, Joy. I may add. Thanks. Ah, beautiful. Is he coming to Sorrento or you're leaving him? I'm leaving her. It's a hurry to be here. I'm oh. leaving her here. Oh, it's gonna I'm be sad. So I'm gonna miss her. I'm sure. I'm sure you are. One more thing to mention, please, if I can. Um, we're gonna ask you all to bring one item uh, that represents your country. So please keep that in mind. Start thinking about it. We're approaching Sorrento very soon. So something that represents your country or something that you want to share with your colleagues. So get thinking on that. Great idea, Masha, as usual. You guys are a volcano, it's such a pleasure to work with you. Uh, so I guess that uh, if we have no more questions, once again, 
now uh, we really want, uh, I mean, we've done a lot, of, a lot of content preparation. Now it's really very much time to pack your suitcases and get everything ready. Melina was mentioning visa issues. Uh, we have to get all the information sorted. So there's no time, guys. And you are the ones who are going to make the adults move. So we at the moment don't have registrations that are matching the numbers of participants. So we have all of you, all of you in the chat, but we have a very small percentage that has secured the registration on the website. As Azair mentioned, it's very important that we have all the information ahead of time because we're working with all the Italian embassies in your own country, if any, or the consulates to make sure that we're facilitating your visa process when you need it. And also everything else that needs to be done travel insurance documents for your parents or your guardians who are traveling with you. So it is very, very important. We'll be reaching out to you, but also you have to make sure that you're reaching out to your respective focal point to make sure they do their job, okay? So once again, thank you very, very much uh, to all of you. A big thank you, big shout out to Amy and Ella. Uh, you guys are inspiring, amazing, and we can't wait to have you with us in Sorrento and for everyone to be joining and Amy and Ella will be sitting behind the UK flag in the simulation of the German assembly. So there's a lot of fun, a lot of fun, a lot of fun happening. And uh, uh, thank you for the club of CAP that has been uh, uh, listening to us and for everyone else that is going to connect with us a little bit later on. And uh, a big shout out to all the GYTSers that were not able to participate. Make sure you continue watching us, you spread the news, and you keep the community really talking about it in your own country. You are the pride of your country, and you're going to be carrying that flag all the way down to Sorrento, Italy. So once again, thank you very, very much. We're always there for you anytime, and see you in Sorrento. Bye. Bye. Bye.